state and of course talking about uh, COVID-19 where we are with this killer disease of course and virus some people say that's taking lives and making life having a different turn if you'd say that and uh, with me this morning I'll be talking I'll be taking it from a religious perspective how we've come with it now we must say this thing about the executive governor of Kaduna State Malam Nasser Rafai in on how you know measures that have been taken to keep citizens of the state safe but again there were you know very challenging you know uh, faces to covid-19 in kaduna of course um nigeria's religious people and talking about kaduna religious people with uh, you know christian muslim and, and other you know religions that we have with us persuading the citizens to see this thing from um, you know uh, god's uh, view on it uh, in islamic uh, perspectives and the christian perspectives to it and of course, uh, we are, you know, happy to say that, um, yes, Kaduna had turned out to be a state to, uh, that others would want to copy about how it had managed the COVID-19. Now, this morning, I have my guests in, you know, some in the studio, one of them in the studio with me. And of course, I'll be doing another call by phone. Uh, Sheikh Ahmad Gumi, um, a religious cleric. Islamic cleric that we do know, uh, very popular in the state, is with us online, and we'll be talking from that perspective of how it has been, you know, for him to convince the uh, Muslim Ummah in the state about seeing COVID-19, and of course, you know, helping government in this fight against it. And I also have with me in the studio Apostle David Adenion. He is the national chairman, Pastors United for Change Association. Uh, Nigeria and of course uh, uh, Kaduna here. Uh, we'll be talking with them on how it has been with COVID-19. Sheikh Ahmed Gumi, good morning and glad to have you here with us this morning by phone. Uh, good morning. It's a pleasure for me to be with you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. well, looking at it from the Islamic perspective, it, it was yes. a very difficult thing, you know, for a religious people that we are convincing the public, you know, convincing the citizens, especially the Muslim Ummah, that this is a case that uh, we must, you know, go along or get along with government in its fight against this coronavirus. Uh, some people saw it as a myth. Some people just did not believe it. And some people even saw it as a threat to, you know, uh, their religious uh, persuasions. For you, how, how has it been easy? And from what point did you come you know, about talking to the Muslim Ummah about coronavirus and the danger that it poses to the world and, and, and Nigeria not left out. Okay, Bismillah uh, rahim In the name of Allah, the beneficial and the merciful. Uh, this corona or COVID-19 disease uh, has been a big challenge, really, not only for government, but for the religious institutions. Uh, because uh, everybody is saying Nigerians, we are very religious, but we are sentimentally religious, not intellectually religious. So our sentiments with religion is more than the, the knowledge. Otherwise, uh, religion is very simple and easy, and especially Islamic religion has made it easy for followers to conform to any situation. Uh, but unfortunately, people, uh, as you said, some people are skeptical. Some things there is a plot against uh, Muslims or uh, against Islam to prevent people from praying. Whereas praying in the mosque or any institution is not uh, compulsory, but it has a great reward. When somebody prays alone at home, uh, he has one reward, but when he prays with congregation, in the mosque he has 27 but this same 27 reward you can get it at home if you can pray with your, your with your family adults so i don't see from the islamic perspective anything that will hinder the proper uh, measures taken by the health uh, authorities uh, absolutely our only problem is the ignorance about the disease itself and the ignorance about uh, religion itself well, again, uh, looking at that, uh, <laughs> the myth that surrounded it, I'm uh, glad to know, too, that you, you're a medical um, personnel, too, a doctor uh, in medicine, and, of course, uh, that, again, will help inform how you, you know, c you talk about it to your audience. But let's look yes. at it, that um, for Kaduna State, uh, uh, you know, we're looking at um, 
people drawn from different parts of the country. Uh, Kaduna State is said to be a melting point of you know all citizens of, of this country. And of course, uh, with the gate point, uh, the gateway that Kaduna is to other you know northern um, uh, states, uh, Kaduna stands a point where it must be a reference point to what would happen to other states of of, uh, of, of the north. And, and so, for you, cause, 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 you know, the Muslim Ummah too, and, and to talk about you know your other clerics, the Muslim clerics too. How it has been for you as a religious arrowhead, so to say, to you know convince your the, the clerics too to join in the, in the government in, in this fight against uh, the COVID nineteen. Yes, the clerics are two types. Mm. Uh, the first type that have some knowledge of modern uh, science, they are all in concordance with what uh, the, the Islamic fatwa, which is worldwide. That yes, lockdown is, is uh, essential. And there's another group uh, which are usually the traditional uh, scholars and some few others who are skeptical that are opposing this, uh, what do you call it, major second, and they see it as a plot by <laughs> external forces. In fact, you know, they always blame the Jewish um, persuasion that is behind the anything bad we see in Islam. So, uh, but uh, as you said, uh, being that I have some medical background, it has it really helped so much in trying to convince a lot of them not to come out openly and openly. Okay, so we'll be moving to you know uh, uh, a Christian pastor in, in the church. I have with me Apostle David Adinio. He is the national chairman, Pastors United for Change Association. Kaduna, Nigeria. Uh, Pastor Ad Apostle Adinio, glad to have you in our studios here too. And again, you know, from the Christian perspectives too, uh, of course, we, we, we had challenges too for some people that said that it must be, con you know, we have to have congregational meetings and we have to be in the church to show just how much, you know, we are with God and that with COVID-19, it is God that, you know, has answers to it. He came with it and so he has answers to it. Again, there were those that just did not and would want to push that um, uh, religious centers or institutions must not be part of the measures uh, to keep us away from the, you know, this COVID-19. How you know, have been able to persuade the, the Christian faith too and the followers here? Yeah. Uh, good morning, the moderator. I want to thank God for this morning for the great opportunity to talk to our people and to let them be aware that uh, it is not a joke that COVID-19, talking about COVID-19, COVID-19 is a reality. And seeing from the perspective of other nations who are advanced, that we have seen it, we have watched it, and we have seen it, that a lot of them, a lot of people, they have good medical facilities, and they have a lot of uh, incentive for their people, but yet... COVID-19 have killed a lot of people from those angle. Based on the questions you are asking this morning, sir, I want to say that uh, the church is accept they did not fight against gathering of people. But the situation we have found ourselves in Nigeria or all over the world has made it very, very necessary at this time for the structure, not the church, for the house of God, where the place that people go, go to worship to be locked down for some time to curb the spread of this deadly disease especially in Kaduna State and uh, many people don't really believe or many those who believe think that it is a form of victimization against a religion or against sex, 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 certain sex of people but I want to say to us this morning whatever the government of Kaduna State did for the 10, ten solid weeks of lockdown of House of, uh, the place of worship, whether for the church or for the mosque, it is not intentional. It was not intentionally done so that they can deprive people from good to serve their God or to worship their God. But it was done to curb the spread of this COVID-19 from attacking the people. Because I believe the way we worship God, the way we do things in Africa, is, 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 is all a capacity that we have to embrace one another. Uh, shake hands with one another, sit that tight close to one another, and these are the things that the the government saw. If this thing that were not quickly, the government did not quickly take this action they did, they took that time. I believe Kano will be one of the states today that having the highest or not highest or the second or third to the to Lagos state in having COVID-19. 
But we thank God for the proactive steps that have been taken by the government to stop a lot of things in Kaduna. Not only the church or the mosque were locked down, the market, the schools and other places where COVID-19 can be spread easily. So it's not a fight against a religion. It's not a fight against people. It's not a fight against sectional or institution. It's a fight against the people itself that the sickness came to fight against us. But we thank God for the proactive step being taken. So please, I want to advise our people, now that the lockdown has been eased down, it is even the time we need to take precaution more than when we are locked down. And I believe God is going to help us. Apart from God helping us, we must obey the rules, the regulations of this uh, the, 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 of social distancing, face, face, uh, wearing of face mask, and other things that have been outlined for the people, uh, so that we will not come back to having this sickness invading the state or the country. God will help every one of us. Sir. All right, uh, still, still on that, I, I mean, we are said, you know, we're said to be going through um, a new normal now because of COVID-19, that life may never be the same, you know, with us again. And so, for the church too, will it ever be the same again in the way we worship and we, we, we go about our activities in the church? Uh, actually, it, it, it may not necessarily be the same because, first and foremost, when you talk about coming back to the Zoom church services by the government regulation now which has been specified that social distancing but the government has said social distancing is not enough let there be physical distancing which is going to be two meter away from one another but the kind of church or the kind of worship we knew we have before is a church that we have to sit down so that should do so that beside one another and uh, we did we are, we are doing a lot of things together but this COVID-19 has regulated relationship. It has regulated worship. Not against any religion, but against the cup of the spread of this deadly disease among the people. Because if the people's welfare are important and paramount, as it is important and paramount to God, it should also be paramount and important to the government, which the government has taken these proactive steps. And I believe at the end of the day, those who say, or those who have said it is it is they are against this particular regulation they will come to applaud the state government or the federal government for what they are doing to curb the spread so i want to talk i want to say to our brethren that this fight is a fight for everybody we need to fight it and make sure that this covid-19 which has come to kill our people is killed out of this of existence so that we have our normal way of life and normal way of worship and i pray the almighty god is going to help us as the church is reopened to comply with the regulations and the rules. Akram Allah, I, I have to ask these questions because uh, at the you know, advent of COVID-19, uh, some measures were taken, especially by you know, the northern state governors, about the Almajiri issue. Uh, we saw yes. a situation where Almajiris were being taken back you know, to their original homes or states. And that, again, brought some argument, a serious one, into the fight against COVID-19. For you, um, a religious cleric we, that we all look up to, in the fight, or not, or steps taken, so to say, steps taken about, you know, taking the Almaj race back, you know, to their original homes. Why are you satisfied with the way government handled it? And I'm not talking about government of Kaduna State. I'm also talking about governments of, you know, states of the country. Okay, I think the, the, the best way to describe it is not that they are taken back to their state of origin. No, they are taken back to their parents. Yeah. Any child is supposed to be under the guardianship of his father or his, or his relatives until when he is uh, 18 years, then he has a chance to go anywhere he likes. So it's taking them back to their parents, which who are the first primary responsibility of parenthood. And you cannot train people just like that roaming about in states, in fact, or in towns which the, their parents are not there. They are, they has, there is that tendency to, to misbehave. So I think if you look at it from that way, this is a very positive step. And I hope that it will be sustained by all state governors. And I have some state governors are saying they, they, they welcome al -Majiri. This is wrong. You cannot welcome a boy detached from his parents without any care and guardian. All we want is that they should be sponsored. Al-Majri school should be built. 
and their teachers should be on salary and uh, parents should be assisted to see that they are they are well taught so i think generally the decision is good for those state governors and uh, it should be sustained we saw a situation in last administration i'm talking about the pdp administration where we had schools uh, for this uh, one young ones you know schools to attend all schools you know the situation is now is that schools of that sort are not in existence or have not been taken care of in, in any form uh, when i talked about you know these children being returned to their states I, i'm talking about where their parents reside which would be uh, uh, whether you know in one state or the other but again you are talking about uniting them with their parents now for was it in the right direction that we had schools for them and that uh, uh, government's concern for, for, for these children and now that we don't see any of that now again isn't that going to be a problem for parents who hardly can take care of themselves than talking about taking care of uh, 10 15 20 children uh, no it's uh, if a parent an adult cannot take care of himself then how do you expect a child thrown uh, away somewhere very far to take care of himself I mean, this is more a reason, because the economic situation is bad, this is more reason that they should not leave their parents. So that's not an excuse. Okay, we should hold those parents responsible now for, you know, yes, keep on in that fact, it's not only God will hold them responsible. In Islamic religion, the parents are hold, uh, held responsible for their children until when they become uh, matured. So we cannot escape from that. This is also a religious law. You cannot allow your child to just throw him away. You are supposed to take care of him. His feeding, his, his education and everything. All right, Akra, Akra Wakala, I want to ask one question that I will need to share around with the uh, Christian brother in the studios here too. And this yeah. is about government's responsibilities to its people. I'm talking about government citizens' responsibilities. And this, you know, came out with COVID-19 where we saw that governments of the states of the country were interested in giving out palliatives to cushion the effects of um, the, the, the lockdown on lockdown. the poor and the vulnerable in our society. Now, for Kaduna yeah. State, uh, we had one, two, phases of it may have may have another phase or may not as we are you know having an ease on this lockdown for palliatives you know and, and the way it was distributed and for what came to the people why are you satisfied about government's intervention here no the intervention is a good idea but i don't think it has reached the people at all mm. and the problem is the endemic corruption in our system people are actually in a, in a what do you call it it's terrible how people in even in hardship when in this kind of uh, pandemic when people are supposed to be uh, to show more piety and to fear god more people uh, did not really give out what they are giving the, the, nobody people are not honest in the distribution of the palliative this is what i had and even the palliative itself is not enough i've been asking government to even borrow money as we borrow money to to electrify Nigeria as we borrow money to build roads. We should borrow money to feed. Food should be at now, it should, it should be very cheap, even if it requires that um, it should be imported. Okay, uh, Apostle David, again, we know from the Bible that uh, we should be our brother's keepers. With the experience of the palliatives, did we, did we see that, you know, with, with Christians displaying that and expressing what it is, you know, as commanded and directed that we should be our brothers keepers, people coming in to help at, in, in this period? Well, actually, there are quite a number of people or churches who responded to these palliative issues. They responded to it in the area that they helped their members to cushion the effect of this COVID-19 in their families. I, for example, I knew a lot of them who call or drive their cars with their full store palliative in their booth, distributing around the street. For their, for their members and for those who they think need the palliative. On the issue of uh, the government palliative, I want to say, based on the this Hague uh, perspective, actually the palliatives were given by the government to be distributed to the people. And one thing I understand about this is because the palliative may not necessarily go around everybody. It is going to be for those who have been given the palliative, we know that they have given it. But in this situation, how many people will now come out and say, I have been given 
uh, this palliative, have not been given this palliative. So it's a matter of individual responding to the need of the people, the organization, to complement the effort of the government. And uh, uh, it is this time that we need to relay, exhibit this word, be our brother's keeper. And uh, some of these things is, 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 a, is a necessity in a world that there are too many poor people around. Too poor people looking for food, which this lockdown has exposed it. Most of them are mechanics, some of them are, they sell daily to get their daily needs. And this lockdown has made them to not have money in their hands. So I believe that Nigeria is not yet advanced to this point of advanced country in the area of uh, palliative giving that can now be sustainable in uh, uh, in every family but i believe that we will soon get to that point that this country will get to like advanced country when this kind of pandemic comes up they are able to reach out to the people and meet the need of the general public so to me i know that a lot of churches a lot of brethren responded to the need of the people even in our community i, I could see somebody who came all the way from abuja with load of uh, rice, beans, to come and distribute to the people around. So I believe that uh, this is the time we should show love to our people, and I know many have shown that love, and we still need that love more from the brethren. You're from government side, is what I'm saying now. How much uh, government, how um, responsive uh, government well, Actually, to? I may not be able to categorically say this is how or what government has done in the area of palliative, but I'm privileged to be part of the... The, 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 the people that disputed in a, in a cluster. And what we did in the cluster was that we, 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 we collected their name and the packages or the, the way they, they bagged it for the people. If you, don't, if you get a, a rice, you, you don't get beans. You get beans, you don't get rice. So we make sure that this thing go round. It goes round the people. Because if you have to give everybody the same, the same package, maybe you give them rice, give them beans, you give them spaghetti, they may not. They, it, 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 at the end of the day, people who are supposed to have gotten uh, of this will be denied the privilege. So I could say it is it was not everybody who have, who got this palliative from government, but I believe strongly that quite a number of people, some of them, some of them got this palliative, which I know, and I can testify to it by myself that I'm part of the cluster that is rooted in uh, this, uh, this palliative in one area of this uh, Banawa, Narayi, and uh, so. Okay, uh, Akramakala and uh, Apostle Paul, uh, I'll have to, John, uh, sorry, David, I'll have to go for a commercial break now. And so, uh, please um, join me after this break. Okay. Let it linger. As we feed your curiosity on 98.9 in Big Talk FM. Glad to be back with you on the program Perspectives this morning. And uh, sharing thoughts with us this morning, I have Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Gumi with us. Um, also, um, one of our religious clerics in, in, in the state. And of course... Um, also, have Apostle David Adenino, the National Chairman, Pastors United for Change Association, Kaduna, Nigeria. And we're all talking about, um, from the religious perspectives, what COVID-19 has exposed us to. And, of course, um, persuading our followers um, with uh, measures put down by government. Well, Sheikh, uh, we are now uh, at a point where uh, over two and a half months, uh, ten weeks, so to say, and uh, we're having a relief uh, from uh, government's directives that uh, we, there's an ease in the lockdown. And But again, uh, for religious uh, institutions, uh, you know, uh, we are, for the Muslim Ummah, it's uh, Friday worship, uh, and then for the Christians, uh, we're talking about Sundays. Uh, again, how satisfactory can this be, you know, about, you know, how these directives have affected our, our religious persuasions? <coughs> okay, uh, the, uh, I, I have been among those uh, religious leaders that met with the government officials about this relaxation. Um, I think uh, it is time in, uh, to affect it now. What I advise worshippers, especially the Muslim worshippers, is that 
the COVID-19 is still around. In fact, it's increasing. If you look at the statistics, mm. it's increasing. So religiously, nobody's obliged to attend such um, worshipping since uh, they can do it at home. I'm saying this because uh, in the meeting, I asked an expert, which is a public health official that was there, what do you, what's your view from the epidemiology you get? What is your view? Is it time now to start gathering people in worshipping places? He said, it's not, it's not time. And uh, Islam has taught us to always ask the specialists and those who have knowledge on every specific issues before we take any decision. So I know the government is pressurized by economic, by social and other reasons, but religiously nobody is obliged to attend such worshipings until when uh, the, the disease is clear. And my good uh, index for them to notice is that when they see the president of the nation meeting with his ministers face to face without any social distances, then that is the time. They, okay, we can come back to the mosque and, and pray together. Especially for Muslims, I expected when they pray, they put on, they, they come close together. And it's especially difficult for Muslims because we prostrate, put our head on the ground. Uh, it's not like uh, maybe a church where people sit down, they have little uh, exchange of, uh, what do you call it, um, contact. But in Muslims, they are supposed to come close together, then prostrate, put their head on the ground. And you see, uh, if there is somebody who is infected, somebody can easily take it from the ground. Uh, so uh, we have to emphasize, yes, it's a government decision, we accept it, and I think it's good especially to silence those critics but as a worshipper nobody's obliged to go until when the clearance comes from the ministry of health and health officials so for you you'd rather have uh, the muslim Ummah still stay back home uh, it is yes, not against yes, stay uh, back home and leave the worship for those who are skeptical and those who don't believe mm -hmm. and even for them if they know, any Muslim who knows that he has a, 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 an elderly person in whom he stays with, then I advise him not to go. Because he can pick it and come and infect a, an elderly person who is recently at home. Uh, so we should be very careful about that. Okay. The clearance is from government. The clearance is not from the Ministry of Health or is not from religion. Because religion says once there is any fear of disease or fear of contracting anything in the mosque, people should stay at home. This is categorically stated in the Quran and is stated in the Hadith. The Quran says you should obey those who have knowledge. And the Hadith says if there is any pandemic, everybody should stay at home. Okay. Well, Apostle David, here too, uh, Sundays for church services only, but we do know the Christian faith that uh, every other day can be service day, congregational you know, gathering and all of that. So for you, just Sunday alone, and where we have weekday services, uh, of, you know, in the days and all of that. So how do we, how do we cope with that? Uh, based on the regulations of the government from the meeting that was held last week, Thursday, I want to concur with uh, the fact that due to pressures from people for the places of worship to be opened, and uh, I believe that the uh, government wanted to streamline or to want to guide against the curve of the spread of this disease, especially in, in Kaduna State, based on their perspective, but maybe people do not see it that way. They were pressurizing them. And now the place of worship has been opened. It's a need more for caution, more than ever before. When you see yesterday, the rise in COVID-19 in Nigeria is on the increase. And uh, now that the churches are going to be, as, as, as they declare, opened for worship, this is, the, this is the time for us to be to take precaution ever more than before. Because just one person in the congregation that has this COVID-19 can lead to all the members being quarantined for 14 days because that is the regulation from the uh, uh, the ncdc that if they discover that one person has the covid 19 among a family the rest family must be quarantined for 14 days so if a person in the, in the congregation get the covid 19 that means that every member of that church is going to be quarantined for 14 days which is just as if there's no worship center again but 
it is time for us to be proactive in our measure to fight against the spread. Just as the governor and the government are working tirelessly to make sure that this thing does not escalate in Kaduna State. So we need to join hand with them to make sure that this COVID-19 is going to be reduced in Kaduna State. And uh, to buttress your point, now that the place of worship are open, I want to personally uh, ask the government to come out with uh, uh, this uh, maybe a committee that is going to be enforcing it. Committee that are going to be watching over how this lockdown, ease of lockdown is going to be managed among in the churches so that there are not going to be a lot of violations and abuses that people can tend to go to us. Because we are living in days that we don't believe that we, are, we, we, we believe in the Holy Spirit. We can do whatever we want to do. We can, we can do or we cannot do something. But this is not, we must obey the rule of experts. We must obey the rule of the government so that there will be no more calamity than envisaged and in the state and among the people. Okay, time for me to go, you know, to the audience now. Um, time for us to ask questions, especially on our persuasions, um, the, the, uh, the Muslim and uh, Christian faith, that we ask questions on our persuasions in our religions. And, of course, um, Sheikh, uh, Dr. Sheikh Ma um, Mahmoud Gumi with us, you know, online, and also have Apostle David uh, Adenino with us. Numbers to call to be part of this program, 081-40,989. 081-40,989 or 070-87-800-989 begin to take your calls now Hello, good morning Good morning, Mr. Aloy. Good morning And good morning, good morning to the Apostle and Sheikh al I I enjoyed their contribution and what they said this morning. I think it's a fresh theory. Yeah. Yeah. What I want to say is that truly uh, everyone is happy that religious uh, 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 centers have been opened. But the thing is that I remember what the government or the government said today that everybody is now responsible for himself or herself. I think people have been given more responsibility just as you said before you open up the line. I think the government are now looking at us to see how we will be matured in our behavior. So I want to call on the people and everyone that is listening to me and join my voice also with the voice of the two leaders that are here, that please, let us try to respect what the government is doing. Mm. This is to protect all of us, not to be biased on any religion or on anybody, I believe, but to help protect and save us from this pandemic. I also want to call on the government to see to it that now that the religious places have been opened, let them make sure that please and please, no one is molested in whatever way. No citizen of this state and no citizen of Nigeria should be molested in any way. Okay, let's Mr. Let them see that they protect the people. And lastly, sir, I want to advise again that please, now that we are free, because what I saw this morning, just now, if the government is true in the fight against al Majorenti, now I saw this morning, now, when I went to get something for myself, it's very disturbing. You can see the number of al that are patrolling the places with their fleet. So I want to say that if they are truly trying to want to help these children, let them make sure that their parents keep these children at home. Okay. Thank you. All right, we got you on that, Mr. Fresh. Uh, I'll, I'll take another call now. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Tony Alabi. Good morning. I'm calling you from Katina. Okay, pa. Welcome, Yeah, all right. All right. Uh, what I have to say this morning concerning the reopening of our own worship centers that we have been agitating all of us, including me, for the government to open it. And the uh, government uh, did the needful. We are grateful. But the worshippers now that will go back to worship in those worship centers, I will let all of us, including me, 
we should go back to our God. We should start doing the needful. We should start practicing our own religious injection. By so doing, Qatar State and Nigeria at large will be a better place for all of all of us to live, not to just not uh, to uh, to be using mouth. That is what I call hypocrisy. To be just saying we want our religious places to be reopened, and in another in another uh, way we are not practicing the real thing that our religious asks us to do. So this is my take this morning. Oh, okay. May the Almighty God continue to protect us. All right, Piles. Thank you on that. I will take one more call before I come back to my guest. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Master Aloy. Good morning. Good morning, Sheikh. Good morning, Apostle. Yes. I'm Kore by name. Mm. Honestly, they have said it all. Uh, and uh, the two callers have said it all. We should be uh, our own empire now. The government should yeah. not come in, no matter what. Let us uh, apply that safe distances and do the needful. And by so doing, we will pray to God. He will answer us. That's just what we are praying. May God continue to heal our land. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I welcome the uh, Sheikh. It's been a long time. I, I didn't hurt from him. Thank you very much. All right. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Akramakadla, uh, let me come to you first on this. Uh, and uh, institutions of worship, I'm talking about why we have to go to the mosque, why we have to go to the church. The attachment, so much attachment that we put on places of worship. Uh, the question is, how much you know, of it is in our heart about our persuasions, our religious persuasions, the injunctions that we've been asked to, you know, carry out by, by the books that we all hold on to. And, and why there's so much attachment on these structures, as I would say? Yes, in fact, I'm impressed by one of the speakers who said, uh, even though he agrees or he supports the opening of the places, but people should reflect the religion in their lives. Mm. Especially here now in the north. Look at the core northern states where people are killing p p villagers, savage, killing and kidnapping and doing all sorts of anti Islamic things. This should be the uh, source of concern more than just attachment to structures. Because God is every, I and mean, God sees everybody, knows everybody. Wherever you pray, Allah will answer you. We can see Prophet Jonah. Which is mentioned in the Bible, also is mentioned in the Quran. He's in the belly of the well, and yet when he prayed to God, God answered him. So you don't have to be in a building before uh, God answered you. But we should imbibe in ourselves, in our character, the true teaching of religion, of being your brother's keeper, of, of being uh, helpful to the poor and the needy, and that shall, we shall not kill people. No, but no religion has given authority for people to kill people. Uh, if there's anything, is the government or the authority that's allowed to implement uh, any law that uh, pertains to killing. But people ordinarily to to start killing people, kidnapping people, and doing all sorts of In fact, for us in the mosque, don't be surprised when you open a mosque, you cannot go with very good shoes to the mosque. Or otherwise, when you come at somebody, will steal them. So we have to really change our character to reflect mm. the true piety that is supposed to be, not just to be attached to buildings. Okay. And, and again, Mr. Fresh mentioned something about still, still seeing uh, the, the Amajiris also still in town. Uh, what would you say to that? Oh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a sad news for me to hear that still the Amajiris are there because um, I, I don't think um, this is a responsibility of the government and the parents. Okay. Because these children, they have rights. They have rights to education. They have right to a decent life. We cannot allow them to be roaming the street. We should check and, and, and help them and assist them. Maybe it's just a logistic issue. Uh, gradually, maybe the government will be able to, because there are so many, there are millions, and they go, maybe they cannot take care of them. But I hope it should be sustained and uh, there should be effort to build for them to school, to revive those schools we mentioned. So that they can have good education and they can have their rights and share of the national care. Okay. All right. I'll uh, come to you, Apostle uh, David, here yeah, too, about structures. So much mm -hmm. attachment to structures. What, are, what happens to our heart in all of this? Well, the structure is just a mere place of worship. Right. Our worship is not tied to structure. Just as uh, the sex said, Jonah prayed from the belly of the fish and God had him. Uh, to, I believe that. Uh, the sentiment, the sentiment about 
this COVID-19 has brought out the reality of each religion. Yes. People are clamoring for what is not supposed to be clamored for. They talk oh. things that are not also be talked about. What we need to talk about is synergy between one another. How do we relate with one another? Yes. How do we coordinate with one another? Yes. But we left the essential and we are talking about the non-essential. And that has been the problem that, has, that we have created. Now that we are going to be reopening church, we need to change our perspectives, our mentality, our handling of issues among one another, among in the society that we found ourselves. So that the Kaduna State and Nigeria at large will be a better place to live. Hmm. Well, well, Jack, I have to put this across to you. Okay, I see some callers on the line, but let's take some calls before I, you know, putting this okay. question across. Okay. I'll call us there. Hello. Okay, and still, while waiting for this call, we just lost some of them. While waiting for this call, I have one on the line there. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, Comrade Gabriel, the Texas man. All right, Comrade Gabriel. Sir, let, let me appreciate and first of all, Invita, for enlightening us on this uh, list of, this, uh, of the state governments and uh, stay at home order. And I want to thank also the two clergy men. Uh, His Excellency should be praised because from one day he took us to three days. Today he has asked us to go out, but it is from 8 o'clock to uh, 5 a.m. in the morning, we should stay at home. I think that's a very nice issue. And from all the discussions there, this is not political. It is just for our own safety. So we thank the Excellency, putting you there at the studio and the clergyman for understanding with, uh, with the governor. And we pray that this COVID-19 will be a thing of the past. Comes few days. May the Almighty God protect you, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Comrade Gabriel. Still with your calls. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. This is Clement Tiduba calling. All right, Clement, let's hear you. I want to encourage the, the governor. If, if, if the mess becomes too much among all the worshippers, they should please make it a, a complete curfew, not lockdown anymore. <laughs> because I don't expect somebody to be too interested in going for a congregational prayer and then go home to infect all the other people who are not their members. So I am advising the governor, if he wants to work, let it be a total coffee for one month. Let's see what will happen. He <laughs> okay. will then let him go and die. <laughs> all right, um, Clement, I uh, just about had you on that. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll take one more call. Uh, you know, I'll come back to my guest. Too. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning yes, good morning. Uh, uh, my question is... Who is on uh, the line? Yes. Uh, Buba Umar. Buba Umar, all right. Uh. Yeah. Uh, people of the age of 50 and above have been disqualified from visiting uh, worship areas and so on. Now, uh, is that what uh, COVID-19 uh, to us uh, that a uh, certain category of people have to be isolated uh, from uh, 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 attending uh, worship areas. Now, also wanted uh, to make a little comment about al -Majiris. Now, al have become a political uh, a tool, uh, just like uh, somebody who wanted to uh, have some vote uh, involve al Majri into politics. Now, what are you doing to stem to stem up uh, the exigencies that may result from uh, uh, that of uh, al Majri? Sir? Thank you very much. Okay, I'm sure this is going to check uh, uh, Abogumi. Uh, uh, you can take on that, sir. Hello. Hello, hello. Yes, okay, you can take on that. Uh, Buba Umu. Yes, actually, I didn't understand what he was saying. He talked about um, the age age limit. Yes. I think the government gave an adversary that mm. if you are 50 or 55 and above, you should, you should take uh, that responsibility yourself and avoid these areas because you can easily contract this disease and it's more fatal when it affects somebody who is elderly. And this is a very good uh, health advice. 
And I'm also adding that even if you are a young man and you know you live with elderly people, please avoid these places because you can contract it and come and give to innocent people who are staying at home and children even. Mm. So um, it's, um, it's a, what do you call it? It's a good advice. Mm. As for the Almadri, Almadri issue should not be political because it affected the whole region. Mm. And we can see how the chaos in the, in the society. These Almajiri are not educated. They need, besides the Islamic education, they need modern education so that they can feed themselves. We need them to be um, productive with the society. We, uh, no nation can allow children like that to be roaming about in the street, begging uh, in, the, in the premise that they are studying, studying religion. No, it doesn't happen in anywhere in the Islamic world. You can't see them in Egypt. You can't see them in Saudi Arabia or even in uh, other advanced Islamic countries like Malaysia. So we have to really put effort and forget about uh, political differences. That's why I want this government to <coughs> reactivate those schools that we have built for El Madri, those modern schools. Forget about the religion, what do you call it, political differences and come in, infuse money in it and help these children to come out of this uh, problem they have. Okay, uh, Apostle David, too, your thoughts on that? Uh, on, uh, you know, uh, COVID-19 for the elderly and of course are we denying them the right to worship or to go to places of worship and all well, of that? Be brief, the, that is not a denier for worship mm. because they are very very suspective to contact of COVID-19. I think that's why they advise that this age limit should be exempted out of the worship place for now. It is not that government say actually that they should not go to church or to go to place of worship forever. But for this time now, they should just abstain from it. So that the tendency of them getting it is very, 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 very high. So that they should not be a victim of COVID-19. And at the end of the day, we should not be praying for what we can avoid. We should not be praying and fasting for what we can logically or tactically avoid. So my advice to the church is, it is not a fight of victimization. It's not a fight against age section or anybody, but to avoid unnecessary prayer but i will not be praying for what we can afford so god will bless us and god bless the state and the government very good Akram, i'll just your last line on this I, I mean talk to family talk to citizens about the situation that we are in now covid19 with us here so for family for all of us going about our businesses your last line here Okay, <clears throat> what I would say is that still uh, <clears throat> people should continue to pray to God. God can be prayed to everywhere in the school, in the house, in the home, and in the mosque. But people should really take the responsibility on themselves. Government has given its own directive, and which is in line with the health uh, recommendation. Please, people who are old should avoid it. And also, it's not an obligation on any Muslim. To attend it because the fear of this uh, contracting or getting infected with uh, COVID is still there. In fact, cases are increasing. Even in Kaduna itself, it's increasing. So we should not compound the issue and hide behind religion. No. Allah can answer our prayer wherever we are. So pe people should take care. Thank you very much on that. Apostle David here too. Thank, Thank you me. very much for this. And, uh, it's not something that we need to take with levity. We should see it as a reality. And then we should not become a victim of it so that what we tend to do for our nation, for our state, for our family, will not be jeopardized by the shortened death of COVID-19. And I pray none of us shall become a victim of it so that we need to take cautions and precautions. God bless us. And on that note, I'd like to thank you, uh, Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Gumi. Thank you, sir, for coming on the program. Uh, thank you. It's a pleasure. Right. And Apostle David Adeniro, National Chairman, Pastors United for Change Association, Kaduna, Nigeria. Thank, thank you, you very much, sir. Thank all you right. Very much. Okay. We well, thank you all for being part of it. This morning, we'll come back with perspectives tomorrow. I'd like to thank Dashin for connecting us with the people. The wisdom, too, for putting us in the pictures this morning. Perspectives will come back tomorrow morning. Good morning. Thank you.